Church and Dwight, the company that brings you brands like Arm & Hammer, Hero Cosmetics, and OxyClean is hiring. Church and Dwight is looking for experienced team members at their Old Fort and Fostoria distribution facilities. Full-time and part-time positions available. Wages from $21.50 an hour and benefits starting day one. Come join a place where people matter. Learn more by visiting churchdwight.com and click on careers. That's churchdwight.com. Church and Dwight is an equal opportunity employer. And then I guess Joseph Mormonisms at him a bit. He gives him this pep talk. And which can I say? Peak Joseph Smith. He's like, look, they might kill you. They might torture you. They might say in all of the history books that are even a little reputable that you let me go in exchange for whiskey that my brother brought with him. But you get to go to heaven and dying for me builds character. (laughs) (laughs) God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema or the shadow people will come again. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting at 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Mormon Movie Month. Let's oh, yeah. do it some more. Yeah, it's just, am, just am, getting started for you, isn't it? Am, am, am. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? It's a funeral potatoes day, Noah. It's a funeral potatoes day. It's just that kind of day. So tell, wait, that would be a funeral, right? Yes. Okay. Look so, behind you. <laughs> tell us, he Mitt Romney died. Oh no! Just now. <laughs> well, we recorded. We've advance. been having a psychic streak on the shows yeah. over at CN. I think we should start calling those shots. Sure. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Out of Liberty. It's the story of Joseph Smith and his buddies, while aided by the God of the universe, trying to break out of jail and failing so many times <laughs> for the entire movie. Yakety Sax is missing from this piece of media, unlike any other piece of media on Earth. There's almost no moment in this movie where Yakety Sax could start playing where it would be inappropriate. Yep. Right? There's like two. All right, and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love old-timey westerns about men of grit and iron and the songs sung of heroes of the West, but you'd like them sung about your child rapist prophets escape from prison instead, you (laughs) will love (laughs) this movie. Yeah, so quick correction. At the end of last week's show, we implied that this was going to be the story of Joe Smith's death. It's not. This is a different time that Joe Smith was in jail, <laughs> which instantly made this movie so hard to Google because you wanted to fact check it. And you were like, when Joseph Smith was in jail in Missouri in 1839. <laughs> when he did the treason. No, not no, that. Not no, that, tre- not different, that treason. Different, treason. Oh, damn it. different war against a different state. When he failed. No. Okay. <laughs> Also, because the Mormons have spent so much time and and energy trying to whitewash this history, yes. if you click the wrong link, you end up on like true history facts brought to you by the Mormon Church dot com. Yep. And you're like, well, that doesn't seem real. Right. According to Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this other than its history? Do you want to know uh, anything else you want to nominate it for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst. We think you'll like this algorithm oh, really? for my prime video. So prime video, they know, you know, what you've watched for me. The last two things I watched were this movie and RuPaul's Drag Race season 11. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the oddly one. I thought Brooklyn Heights should have won. And it's cool. You're a closeted homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Prime video had to come up with whatever the fuck is the combination <laughs> of those two things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so like some it's guy who tweaks the algorithm has like a wall of yarn and push pins for just <laughs> my account and he's going crazy. <laughs> they came up with they they are quite certain I want to watch Sausage Party Utopia or Food Topia. Huh. Pretty sure we're all getting that one. Maybe it's because my algorithm is as fucked as yours is, but maybe maybe that's just their I don't know, I give up one, right? Yeah, yeah. they they also think I want to watch um 
pool hall junkies. <laughs> the, and you do. He, and I always do want to watch. You do want to watch. Well, yeah. see, for me, it suggested out of time, which is really funny because I'm pretty sure my algorithm was like you typed the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> How do we average these Nobody out? Nobody was seeking this movie, yeah. You want to watch a burning log crackling? I don't know what to <laughs> do. All right, so I'm going to go with best worst. And I might have used this one in the past. I'm, I'm going to change it up now. I'm going to go with best worst flashback pump fakes. All right, <laughs> yeah. so over and over again in this movie, like the characters seem to be desperately calling for a doodly-doo as though the... The director was sticking him in there so the producer would have to cough up more money, right? right well, yeah. I mean, he says doodly do right there, but there's but they never. The whole movie takes place in this one fucking room, so it never happens. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's the best because the movie does the flashback pump fakes, and then the movie falls for its own pump fake and doesn't know where it is. They get so deep into swooshes at one point. It's the best. Yeah, so confused. And of course, I'm going to take the easy one. We teased it already, but I have to say it. Best worst escape attempts. <laughs> this attempt at an incredibly serious historical drama would make Hogan's goddamn heroes say this is a little silly. Yeah. It's the, uh, the not so great escape, everybody. No, it's fucking amazing. They do so badly. It's the best. We, it, they do exactly as well as they'd have done it if we wrote the movie. I'm sorry to spoil it, but I just want to be clear. The first escaped attempt is walking really slow so he doesn't notice us. That it's literally yep. that is true. Yeah, but we'll get there. We'll get there. But first, this movie needs a minute to peruse the Acme catalog. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the reverential gushing that is out of liberty. They're like the Animaniacs and they keep getting locked in the tower whenever they get caught. Yes, exactly. Over and over again. They are. Brother Joseph, Brother Joseph. Well, Brother Alderman, you, you must stay quiet or Sam will hear you. Indeed, Brother. Are you treated poorly? Very poorly indeed, Brother. We grow ill and the food is wretched. Well, I can solve one of those problems. Why don't you try Factor? Oh, what's Factor? Factors, fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Well, that sounds like a miracle, Brother Aldman. But we Mormons drink no alcohol and consume no hot beverage. Can this factor accommodate our special diet? Indeed it can, brother. With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll have new flavors to explore, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, Veggie, Vegan, and Keto options. A miracle from heaven to be sure. To whom do we pray for this factor? No prayer needed. Just head to factormeals.com slash awful50 and use code awful50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code awful50 at factormeals.com slash awful50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Thank you, brother. Hey, while you're sneaking here, uh, could you bring us you know, some, some guns or a like a knife. We're just we're we're literally only being guarded by one guy. No, I only do podcast sponsors. Sure. Fair. Fellows, fellows, great news. Oh, what is it, Mike? Did Becky forgive you for looking at the Lands End catalog unsupervised? Nope. Sure didn't. But this is this is good. We got the funding to make another biopic about the life of Joseph Smith. Oh. Um oh. another one? I mean, no, I know, I know there have been quite a few movies before, but this one is going to be totally different. This one will be about the time he spent in Liberty Jail. Wait, so you want to make a movie of the life of our prophet who very famously died trying to escape jail for treason? Yeah, uh-huh. But you want the movie to be about the other time he successfully escaped jail for treason by bribing the guards with whiskey. Well, I, I I thought maybe we could not mention the whiskey part. I mean, do we really want to draw attention to this part of his life, like at all? Well, I I guess we could do another movie about the plates. If I have to write about the plates again, I will kill myself. Yeah, me too. Let's do the jail one. Nice. So 
Becky's still mad about the Land's End thing. Oh, man. well, you know, I was elbow deep in the fall sweaters when she caught me. Rough. I know. <laughs> I like a, I like a cable knit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It feels on my skin. Heath, get out of the sketch. We know you like a cable. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open with a title card informing us that it's November of 1838, and under the threat of extermination, Mormons are surrendering to the Missouri militia. For no reason. <laughs> but, like, if it was under the threat of extermination, you wouldn't surrender. Right, like that's the, like this. This movie has called its own bullshit thirty nine seconds in. That's a new record, right? Yeah. yeah, and the point they're making is that Mormons were persecuted by other religions, which yes. is terrible. So they started the right persecuting religion. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. You guys are persecuting other religions. Wrong. Yeah. yeah, you know when a militia that was called out to protect you eventually has to put down your protectedness. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's that. That's what's going on in Mormonism yeah. at this point in history. So, but we learned that all the leaders of, of the Mormon church are in prison, no fault of their own. They didn't do shit. They didn't do anything. They're Fine. Fine. This bunch of bullshit. Did not try to start their own America with beer and hookers. And yeah, Joseph right. Smith is Without the king. Beer and well, hookers. But yeah, so, but it, they're in jail and they're being guarded by a feller by the name of Sam Tillery. So we're going to open with Sam Tillery on his horse coming up to the prison. I guess that nobody stays there overnight. He just he just shows up to guard him during the day. Right. I had no idea what was happening. It's a good thing there was like three minutes of horse walking for me to eventually be like, oh, no, it's a guy on a horse. It's a guy right. on a horse. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Established. <laughs> I think what the movie was trying to tell you right then is just like, get ready for a... Uh, a little slow, slow pace. moving film. Yeah, yeah we're not, <laughs> We don't have a lot of story here to break down. It's all going to be in this. Our entire set is a ten by ten wooden box. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I, at this point in the movie, Heath, I wrote in my notes. I get it. I don't need the entire horse grooming routine. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. So yeah, so he gets his horse. He's got his bucket. We see these prisoners all looking out the window, seeing him coming. They're like, "Here he comes. He's got his bucket." Are we all ready for our escape tonight? Would we like to exposit about it in detail for a moment? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they will do this several times throughout the movie. This is also where they establish that Lyman mm -hmm. is sick. Yep. That will never mean anything and will never have any relevance to the movie, which is pretty crazy because he does like a tiny Tim amount of coughing and he vomiting does. throughout the film. Oh, it's <laughs> fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah. I love that they don't do any of their planning for the whole time. And then last second, somebody's Always. showing up and they like whisper, whisper, plan, plan, okay. plan, plan. They'll do that. Like, what, he, like, cause they're okay. So they're in a, like a basement of this building, right? So they're, they're being kept in the cellar. And when he opens the trap door to the cellar and throws down the little rope that they have to climb up, then they'll start whisper they planning. They always but do it. Yeah. After it's, it's open. Yeah. It's amazing. Right. And it, spoiler alert, Every single plan of their escape will be run away. Yeah, cheese so it. I don't know cheese why they it is down. as far as they ever cheese fucking get. Is all it says on the whiteboard, and yep. they keep trying it. Yeah, <laughs> so. but at this moment, they're doing the whispering thing, and they're like, "Okay, we're we're all agreed that we're doing the the cheese it plan, right?" And and it's because of of praying because God's going to help us cheese it, right? And yes. then one guy's like, "I'm just escaping because I want to leave jail." Jail sucks. <laughs> yes. I want to leave just because of that. I love that guy so much. And they're so all like, much. shut the fuck up, Noah. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, God. Right. So what, now while they're all downstairs whispering about their, their escape plan, Joseph Smith is upstairs at the tiny little building, the little jail building, talking with his lawyer. And Sam Tillery, the, the jailer, is just sort of like looming about the room as they do, right? This is where they're talking about their their desperate need to find an unbiased judge. <laughs> we got to get Eileen Cannon or else we're fucked up. <laughs> yes. I, I wrote my notes. Tell that to Jack Smith. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the lawyer's like, look, man, you're you're asking me to find a, a judge that doesn't hate Mormons. That's not going to fucking happen. Yeah. Right. And again, this is a history rewrite. Right. And I'm no Mormon history expert, but like. This is a history rewrite because the reason they end up having to escape from jail illegally is because they could never get a fair trial. Right. There's a the ton years. of that. Yeah. yeah. Also, I, I have to say, like, 
you know, no offense to this actor or whatever, but this is the ugliest Joseph Smith we've ever seen. It's true. They usually get a real hottie, and this, That's the this thing week is, they got a real naughty. It's it's so weird to say, no offense, this guy's fucking ugly, but like it's not that he's ugly, but like Joseph Smith is usually, they get supermodels to play Joseph Smith, right? Yeah. Joseph Smith always has that prominent comic book jaw no. and his the dick so big is throbbing <laughs> to his fucking socks. No, they've got Mormon Patton Oswalt here. Yes, I yeah, don't exactly. Not <laughs> effective. Yeah. Give an example of someone who's not incredibly attractive, Heath. That's a yeah. weird, you should do it different. So. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Ruining our podcast. <laughs> but so Joseph, but Joseph Smith saying, I'm sure you can do it. The lawyer just keeps telling him you're fucked in different tones of voice, right? Yes. This also is a really great rewriting of Sydney eventually leaving. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So Sydney, what's his last name? God damn it. Rigged it. Rigdon. So Sidney Rigdon, he's the original fold guy. He's the pages in the hat guy. Yeah? No, uh, no, that's no. that's uh I can't forget his name. Martin Martin Harris. That's Martin Harris. Okay, sorry. So Martin Harris is a fooled in the hat guy. Sidney Rigdon is Baptist preacher who's like, this seems like a good con. And so in real, real history, at this time he was like, fuck you guys, I'm doing a new con. And so they part of this incompetent lawyer narrative is going to be rewriting the history that yes. Sidney Rigdon just had to speak for himself. He wasn't um bailing on us. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. We'll get yeah, we'll get there, but absolutely. No, this is a really good lawyer in actuality. He like yes. is super helpful to them and like does his best. But Joe Smith is like, all right, man, I don't know if you gotta get Eileen Cannon, but you gotta just lawyer it. And <laughs> This lawyer, like every lawyer, Anne says this all the time. That's not how it works. You can't. I was you just, just gonna say you this, said I lawyer. Can't just is lawyer said? harder. Yes, I was literally gonna say this is me and Anne, but I didn't know if I was allowed to say. So yes, this is me and Anne. This is every time yes. I ask <laughs> Anne to do anything for our company. <laughs> There's also this great light. So okay, so then Joseph Smith has has to go back down in the hole, and Sam, the the jailer, takes the lawyer outside, and they have a little chat, right? And, you know, the the lawyers try to say, hey, you know, quit serving them bad food and treating them like shit. They're innocent men. And the jailer says, well, if half the charges against them are true, they're the most degenerate men that have ever lived. And the lawyer goes, and if half of them are lies. Yeah. What the fuck was that? Well, like, then they would be the most degenerate men still that ever lived I see yeah. we've been over this if they didn't do half the <laughs> no, crimes but what if it's the other ha oh, the, which, if, if they've not done just as many crimes as they've done that's, okay. that's high <laughs> it's no, their, it's what cancels. even half the crimes only tell truths and half the crimes <laughs> only tell lies and but you get to ask him a question that's the point is that you get to ask him a question. right yeah but yeah so but he has it gives him a good talking to about improving their diet and he he fucks off and then late that night, they're they're about to come upstairs. I don't know why, but like it periodically brings them upstairs so they can stretch out or whatever. So they're about to bring him upstairs or up rope, but they have to go over the plan one last time. He opens the fucking hatch and they're all like, all right, let's whisper about the plan one last time. And they they we get a lot of this like Lyman's too sick. He's hacking up various organs as they walk him up. They're like Lyman, are you gonna be okay to escape? He's like, I'll make it work. I'll make it work. I'm great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they all, but they all get upstairs. Like when Noah was a smoker. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, honestly, every time I laughed. But yeah, so they all get upstairs, and they're like all they like one guy's gonna like stand kind of between the jailer and the door, and then the other guy's just gonna fucking leave walk in is slow the plan. <laughs> okay you gotta i cheese. think they are literally doing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that i believe they are literally doing move slowly his eyes are based on movement <laughs> i think they are though like what else could they possibly be trying for here seriously that was the plan and samuel the jailer guy's like stop trying to escape i can see you. i'll shoot you with a gun i can just see you i can see you right now because i'm looking at you it's the tiniest little room we're in a 10 by 10 box jesus yeah he's like hey i have a a gun don't leave and they're like fuck fine can we borrow an axe yes. <laughs> and, and they never not once in the entire movie come up with 
let's all attack him at once because it means one of them would get shot. Yeah. So they will spend the whole movie being like, what if we prayed to, for God to turn us into paper so we could slip between the cracks? <laughs> but they're all standing there, 19 guys around one jailer with one gun you have to load every 67 minutes. And they're like, I mean, he's got us, guys. Yep, he yep, has no, us. Well, okay, he called us on it. He, he called Debs. There could be door. shoving if we're not careful. Right. Mesothelioma guy could go first. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right like, Lyman, get talk. him. Get him, you're, Lyman. You're about to die anyway, Lyman. So yeah, but but he puts it back down in the in the they, they like they realize that cheese it wasn't enough of an escape plan. They go back downstairs. <laughs> it's the best. They're like, okay, jailer guy can in fact see with his eyes. That was okay. an oversight by us. I saw, okay, New plan. Well, what are we doing? No bad ideas. No bad ideas. What do we got? Really wanted them to just walk over and cross out just leaving kind of slowly off a whiteboard. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> kind of so. fastly. Well, but instead they're like, okay, all right, new plan. Next time we're up there, we just force our way out. And I'm like, that's the same plan. That's just a dumber version of just leave. <laughs> but mean. <laughs> yes. Right. So, and then this is where we get the first of my best worst because Lyman is over there muttering, right? Because he's so sick. He's now just muttering about things that happened in the past as though he was going to prompt us into a flashback, but we we just never get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, please. Surely I've doodly do that by now. I haven't? Oh, okay. No. Do, oh, no. All right. All right. So then we get Tillery leaving for the night. Like I said, he leaves them alone overnight. They have their own fucking cult and they're by themselves overnight. It would be so easy to break them out of jail. Unless somebody was trying to usurp power in the call, I guess that would probably make it harder. But other than that, it'd be so easy. So, but Tillery's leaving and these two guys stop him. Now, I don't know if these two characters ever get names, but these are the, the leaders of the anti-Mormon lynch mob that we're going to see many times throughout the movie, right? Yeah. One of yeah. them's Neil. The one who like does stuff is Neil. Oh, and that's the other Neil? One is like, okay. Neil's mob the one guy who's... too in my notes. Right. Okay. So Neil was the one whose brother was killed in the raid yeah. on the Mormon thing and now he wants to get his revenge against Joseph Smith. Right. I tried to find... Did you guys Google this? I did not. Because this, this smelled like Mormons rewriting history for me, but this might be so deep a cut that even Google couldn't find it because yeah. the reveal... The reveal they are going to have on They Killed My Brother is so funny. It could only be a Mormon rewrite of history, but I, I couldn't sure. find a historical source for these guys. So they they may be a fictional creation, but I really hope this is the Mormons trying to rewrite an actual guy they killed who tried to kill them back. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. That would track. Yeah. So, but yeah, but he shows up and he's like, how dare you, Sam Tillery, protecting these Mormons you, you, this guy killed my brother. You should let me kill him. And he's like, no, no, no. The law is going to have it say. And he like smacks the bucket out of his hand. <laughs> right. Real threateningly. <laughs> and Samuel doesn't flinch. And he's like, ah, oh, fuck. I thought me doing the bucket slap was going to be more impactful. He now it's just it now I just look like an asshole. Get two for yeah. flinching there. Damn. Yeah. It. But we also get a little foreshadowing here. He goes, Tillery, it ain't going to make up for what you done. And I wrote, ooh. Yeah, you do, do have a mysterious backstory. Yeah. So then we cut to January of 1839, right? I love in Eli's notes. He's just like, is that before or after? I forgot when we started. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> when but, is now? Is this a get ahead? Yeah. Is it, yeah. <laughs> but this is like we, we're cutting ahead two months now. And Sam Tillery's got some help from the state. The state has sent him a couple extra guys to help guard all these Mormons. Right. Right. And I like that they establish how they feel about the Mormons out loud. They literally go, well, I hear he has a golden Bible and I'm open to his ideas and beliefs. Well, yep. I believe he is a con man and I do not like him. That will be our dynamic. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah. So, but they reach the jail and they see that there's these two guys like taking up positions for a shootout ahead of them. So they stop a little early and they take cover, but they take cover behind <laughs> this tiny ass little fucking hitching rail. One, yeah. one rail. Get behind this one piece of wood. And they all do. And then Samuel's like, hold on. No, it's it's fine. It's Porter. He's an idiot. It's idiots. It's fine. Yeah. Porter, just... stop doing whatever. You're stupid. <laughs> and then Porter comes out. He's like, yeah, I'm stupid. Sorry. I'm stupid. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Right. So now this is Porter Rockwell. Fun fact, his nickname is the Destroying Angel of Mormondom. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, he was a murderous fuck. Not great. He'll be the idiot for the entire movie. He's almost the comic relief, but not quite. 
Yeah. Is this Hatman? No, no, he's the guy with Hatman. Yeah, he's he's Hatman's buddy. Yeah, there's... Who's the guy? Literally everybody has a hat in this movie. We can't call him Hat Man. I know why you're calling him Hat Man, but they're all wearing yeah. hats. There's one guy wearing a magician's top hat in this scene, and so he will be Hat Man or Fat Guy for the rest of my notes. I believe that's Cyrus. I believe that's Cyrus, okay. char the character's name is Cyrus. But yeah, but so it turns out that Porter and Cyrus are just there because they're protecting the Mormon prisoners when Tillery's not around in case the lynch mob shows up, right? And they also like deliver mail for them and, and shit like that. Yeah. So they go inside the jail, they open the trap door and one of the guys is holding their poop bucket up. So as soon as Sam opens the trap door, he gets poop bucket right in the face. I will say this. Got him. Classic. That is as close to a through line as this movie has. Really <laughs> is poop bucket to the face. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, no, you got to bring that up with you. I'm not taking it. Technically, you have to keep the hatch open when we're shitting. That's what we're <laughs> So, yeah. So, but, but he, like, he lets them all come up uh, upstairs. But first, they stand underneath the open trap door and plot. Because they're about to try to escape some more. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and then, so, like, I guess one of them has to walk out and, like, dump the poop bucket. And they act like, you know, this is going to be part of the plan. But it's not. It's not. We just watch a guy dump a poop bucket for a really long time. Yeah. They're like one lawman guy, the sheriff or whatever, walks out to supervise the dumping of the bucket. And he's watching the guy. He's like, you paused. Like, this is part of a plan. Are you doing a stare down while you empty a shit bucket? No. You can't Normal. really. Normal. You have a bucket full of poop. Oh, shit. Lock eyes with me, though, while I pour out this shit. You're emptying it onto your own shoes because you're not looking. <laughs> <laughs> I was locking eyes. You didn't do it. <laughs> now we have to clean this up. And so, meanwhile, inside, the Mormons would like to speak to the manager of this jail. They're all they're only complaining that their fucking appetizers came out with their meal or whatever, right? And then <laughs> one of the, the guards goes to go back outside and... And one, and one of the Mormons just yells, now, not quite, right away. not quite cheese it, but yeah, he just yells now, and they all try to push the door open. <laughs> so, so the dynamic that we wind up with is that Sam Tillery and the other two prison guards are on the outside of the door, along with Hat Guy, along with Cyrus. All the other M Mormons are on the inside, so they're trying to push the door open. All of the prison guards are trying to push the door closed. And they're doing it Three Stooges fight style. They're stomping yes. on toes. They're biting <laughs> fingers. Poking They're eyes. Eye yeah. poking. Yep. Yes. Yelling to each other to use pushing. Yes. The pushing. Yes. Like, hey, are you guys pushing in the front? We said we would push. <laughs> all right. Oh, all right. Just making sure. Making sure. And they're yelling stuff like, get his keys, get his gun. And I'm like, well, now you just told him I was going for the gun, you stupid <laughs> shit. He can also hear you. This is why we whisper planted when the thing opens. <laughs> <laughs> also, Duh. If, you're the, if you're the jailer, just like step away and shoot them when they try to run out, right? Well, or just all oh, you move away and they all tumble over each yeah. other. And then, yeah, it's going to be super easy to shoot them then. <laughs> well, and then, but Cyrus right now, so Cyrus is not one of the prisoners. He's just one of the two guys that showed up. So he fat goes to guy. fuck off. Yeah, fat hat guy. He goes to fuck off. He goes to run away. And then the one of the prison guards shoots him. I'm like, that man, he's allowed to leave, though. <laughs> but then he's not shot. Yeah, he will not have been shot. He was faking it, apparently. Yeah. The only way I can describe it is, were you ever playing like Guns and Robbers with a kid who didn't have the emotional capabilities to play Guns and Robbers? This was that got you. So you'd shoot him and he'd start crying and you'd be like, nah, man, I, I, I didn't get you. You're, yes. you're good. <laughs> yeah. You're still alive. Right, but the opposite. That's what he does in this historical drama. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, well, I also, I love at this moment, like one of them says, they shot, what's his name? We now fear for our lives in a way that would make returning murderous force justifiable morally, right, guys? That amounts to nothing, of course, because nothing in this movie amounts to anything. Because they didn't do anything. 
That's the thing, right? Yes. The history they, they are rewriting is that we sat around in jail for three months. The food was not five stars. And then we were like, hey, guys, we'll give you some whiskey if you let us go. And they were like, fucking yeah, that sounds fucking great. Absolutely. And we wandered away. Yes. And that's the actual fucking story. And so, yeah, they're trying to put all this action in it. But it's like when Christians make movies about the rapture and everybody's fighting against the rapture, but that's God's plan. So it has to happen no matter what. It's that the history is doing the same thing with this Mormon movie. So, yeah. So they, they, eventually they get the door closed and Sam Tiller says, you guys all get back in your in your fucking jail cell downstairs or I'll shoot you. And they're like, oh, beans. And they do. They just do. And he's like, Porter, I can tell you're pointing your gun from the inside, but it's completely close. That's nothing. Just put it down. He's like, fuck. Fuck, it is Honestly, nothing. given this movie so far, I thought they were going to do the, okay, we're walking away. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, yeah, so so they they all go back to the basement, and now Tillery comes down, and he has to chain them all up, right? He's like, look, you guys tried to escape. It wasn't, like, you never stood a fucking chance, but I just to make it convenient for me next time, I am going to chain you the fuck up, right? Right. And immediately, Joseph Smith is like, God, it's not like we're going to try to escape. He literally for a third says, time. <laughs> there's no need for that. There's no need for that. Yes. It's like, well, just very obvious. You guys just literally, what the fuck do you think just had? We were just pushing, just having fun. Yeah, but we weren't very good at escaping. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. come on. Right. And then, and then Mormon other guy tries to like chat up Sam the jailer to like yeah, make uh -huh. friends with him. He's like, Hey, I can tell you're uh, you're an army veteran. I'm a veteran too. Like, where'd you serve? What's what's going on with that? <laughs> Jailer guy's like, yep. Here's your shackles. So, yep. shackles. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rock paper scissors to decide if you let us go. How about <laughs> so, that? The best five out of nine. So and then, but now they've also taken Porter and Cyrus, right? Because they're like, you guys tried to help them escape, so you're now prisoners as well. They're not being kept downstairs, though. They're keeping them upstairs. So we cut upstairs where Porter is going to have himself a horse monologue about the glories of Joseph Smith. Oh, my God. It's so fucking funny. Right, because like his opening premise is, a lot of people hate Joseph Smith so much. And I'm like, well, a lot of reasons y'all ain't going to admit to in your movie, so I'm actually dying to know what the answer is yeah. here, right? And yeah. one that they keep admitting to, which is he just murdered some guy's brother recently. And yeah. he keeps telling us about it. Yeah. yeah. But no, according to this monologue, the reason is because the greatest prophets always get arrested Treason. Treason. Yeah. Wait, wait. He, he goes, are they mad because he printed a book? Because he formed a church? Because he built a city? And I'm like, well, the fucking indictment says riot, treason, larceny, receipt of stolen goods, and arson, man. I mean, those are, none of those have print a book on them. So it's not that. Just like Jesus and MLK got put in jail. Maybe they did arson. Maybe they didn't. Heard larceny. Say? So <laughs> at one point he says, what's truth? What's lies? What's in between? And I was like, okay, Porter's Eli. That's fun. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's neither here nor there. I feel like it is. I feel like it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but he points out that all the best prophets get locked up and God always has the last laugh. Right. And just as his monologue wraps up, a lynch mob shows up outside. They didn't want to interrupt him mid monologue, right? So they wait till he gets done and then they yell, We want the Mormons, right? So Tillery goes outside to confront the lynch mob and explain the state monopoly on violence. Now, we, we haven't <laughs> mentioned this. This is so fucking dumb. We haven't mentioned this yet. But Tillery, throughout the whole movie, is reading a book on legal ethics. So that because this lazy ass writer wants to say things on legal ethics, because ultimately, right, like this is a story of their prophet escaping from prison. So they want to make it seem like it's just right. So he has to like start like throwing out John Locke quotes now and again. And they do that by having, well, what if he was just reading John Locke that whole time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we find out later it's Blackstone Law and definitely some John Locke. <laughs> the jailer guy comes out, he's like, I will recite from John Locke now and explain society to you, <laughs> to a mob. And <laughs> Neil, the leader of the mob, is like, boo, did you learn that from a book? Yeah. He's like, yes, I read. 
And they all freak out. They're like, ah, this idiot reads. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Well, nerd. So, no, that tracks with what I know from living in Missouri. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> pretty much the the what you what you come to expect. But yeah, so and then you know, when when he realizes that the mob is maybe getting an advantage over Tillery, Porter, Porter Rockwell, who's still inside, grabs a gun and jumps like leaps superhero dives down into the basement so he can defend the Mormons with his gun. Yeah. Against the encroachment of the mob, right? I wanted I wanted him to twist his ankle so bad. It would be else. awesome. <laughs> All right, you're gonna have to take the gun. I can't fucking stay in. <laughs> yeah, but then they try to get into the prison. Tillery manlies at him. Right. Now we should mention too that like the guy who plays Tillery looks and sounds a lot like Thomas Hayden Church. Mm-hmm. Right. I had him as Thomas Hayden Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints in my notes. <laughs> But then they're all like he he tells them to get back. They're all standing there, guns at each other's foreheads and shit. And the sheriff shows up and he's like, wow, how would I best defuse the tension here in this armed standoff? What if I fire my gun in the air as a surprise with a gunshot, a surprise gunshot in the middle of everyone's got a gun to everyone's head? That seems like I, I question your technique, sheriff. (laughs) <laughs> I think he was solving the problem laterally, No, <laughs> They're just all dead on the ground. He's like, great. New jailer? No oh, yes, more no, yes, right. Yeah, shouldn't be a problem. And also, okay, so I have to mention this too. This sheriff is the guy that gave this movie the most money on ye oldie Kickstarter yay, or whatever. He, he is yeah. so bad. <laughs> like everyone else in this movie, like, because this movie is, it's well lit, Right, it, the the costuming is reasonable. It, the directing is reasonable, and given like how little actually happens, what they have to work with, the writing is actually not all that bad. And mostly the actors have been competent, but this guy just comes in and takes a huge shit in the middle of the script. He's fucking awful. Yeah, this guy is to this movie as Burt Reynolds is to all movies he was in after the year nineteen ninety. Like, like, hey. Look at this, Burt Reynolds in a movie again, huh? That's what the sheriff is doing, <laughs> except nobody fucking knows who he is. Right, yes. Exactly. Got an oversized hat. It's pretty yeah, funny because it's too big, big. Pretty big hat. By the way, in terms of costuming, this sheriff like d- donated enough money that he was like, and I get to pick whatever jacket I want. Yes. He chose the jacket from Triple X that Vin Diesel. He sure wears. did. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking amazing. And he's just like, he's like, and this is just the coat I wear. I am a reasonable person now. Also, I have a machine gun and poison. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He does one useful thing. He's like, all right, mob, go home or I'm going to let the Mormons preach at you. And they're all like, fuck, fine. God, I hate Mormons. Yes, right. They all do leave. Yeah, that's a good one. Ramble, ramble, ramble. Yeah. But he's there for Porter and Cyrus, the two guys that helped with the escape. Right. So that's, that's his thing. And then, so they leave and we get this like very quick scene of all the Mormons being cold in their prison and everything. And I only, I would have left this scene out altogether, except that one of them accidentally kicks over the shit bucket in his sleep. Yeah. Okay. That that was funny. Why are they keeping the shit bucket right in the middle? You would keep it in a corner. Why not have it in a corner? corner, Yes. It's your own goddamn fault. You deserve to sleep in your own shit. Who kicked over the shit bucket that's on top of the Jenga game that we put in the middle of the floor <laughs> while we're sleeping together? <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We just had a big almost action scene, which is about as close as we're ever going to get in this movie. So we're going to pause and let you appreciate that. But we're back in a flash with even more Out of Liberty. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Okay, but he's not really Republican. Did you see how fat that bulldog was? I did. I did see how fat it was. Hey, fellas, you ready to record more podcasts? Uh, yeah, Eli. <laughs> Why are you on stilts? Oh, I'm glad you asked, Noah. Ever since Heath declared me the muscle of the podcast a few weeks ago, I can't help but wonder why I'm not also the brains and the tall of the podcast, you know? Hoping these bad boys change that. Got it. Right. Um, Look, Eli. If you're dealing with unhealthy comparisons that are bumming you out, why don't you try therapy? Therapy? I thought that was only for crazy people. No, Eli. Therapy is great for whatever struggles you're dealing with. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. 
wow, so I can find the right therapist for me without the miserable legwork, if you'll excuse the pun. Right, yeah. Because I'm wearing stilts? Still, no, yeah. yeah, we got it. Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right, guys, thanks. So, so are you going to come down? Oh, I can't. I um, super glued my feet to the stilts. Got it. Yeah. Probably should have gone for smart guy first, huh? Yeah, probably. Now, Sam, listen to me. If we're ever going to get justice, we need our lawyer to be able hey, to... Hey, uh, Hiram, what you doing? Hmm? Uh, nothing. Sure, because it looks like you're trying to just walk out of the room in slow motion. I'm not. I am not doing You that. are, though. I can see you with my eyes. No, you can't. Hiram, stop, or I will shoot you with a gun. I'm just looking. At, at the door? Yes. Okay, step back inside. You can see the door from here. Uh, smoke bomb. Dude, dude, you have a turd in your pocket. You just threw it on the ground. No, it was a smoke bomb like a ninja. Sure isn't, man. Okay. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the inaction with Joey's wife, Emma, coming to see him. They, like jo so Joey's sitting in the fucking cell and they, they hear the hoofbeats. And he's like, I know the smell of those hoofbeats anywhere. That's my wife. You know, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe God told him or something. I don't know. Yeah. Nice of them to include uh, Emma, the first wife. <laughs> in this prime, the wife prime. It's funny how they don't include those other ones. So and weird. The, so the weird. ones he had at the same time and the ones that he met as children true. whenever they Talking do these about. movies. So, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, but Emma's there along with Hiram's wife, I guess, and, and Hiram's wife's new baby. At first, Hillary doesn't want to let him in. He's like, you know, they tried to escape again. So no visitors to, to them anymore. And they're like, yeah, but we're ladies and it's 1839. And he's like, yeah, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fair. I wanted them to put the baby in irons just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so he lets him out. He lets him come upstairs. I wanted him to be so revolted by the smell of the guys that they're like, okay, but you can't hug us. Oh, God, Jesus. <laughs> I wanted the baby to immediately vomit from the shit. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, right. And what follows is this like meeting the baby montage and we as Mormons are because that is the only people right. <laughs> intended to watch this movie, are supposed to be so moved. The music in the background is like wah, 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 wah. Oh yeah, and it, no. Uh -huh. And they could they, they, like it, we might as well be watching a reuniting scene between Osama bin Laden and one of his child brides. <laughs> it's so historically speaking. And so and what they're trying to bring across here of course is that Sam Tillery is seeing all of this love and compassion and non-criminality. How could these possibly be bad people, right? Because of course the whole movie is building towards his big change of heart. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 It's so, executed so poorly it's hard to yes say yes to that, but yes, I guess right. so. That's what they're that's what they aim for. Yeah. That's that why also it has to be for. like the, the expert in legal ethics, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So okay, so then we get a scene where the lawyer tells him that he's finally got a, a date for their hearing. I don't know what the which what hearing this is, but the movie like the movie desperately needs something to happen. They're like, hey, good news. We'll be outside of this one fucking room where the entire movie is taking place in at some point for a hearing. Right. In two weeks. Yeah. And they're talking about judge selection again. They're like, oh, it's Judge Turnham. Is he cool? You think that'll be good? And then Samuel's like, judges put aside their biases. They think about fairness only. And I was like, cool. Yeah, the. The legal system of 1839 Missouri is actually better than now. It actually it, uh, yeah, was. Yeah, honestly, probably was. Yeah, no Ken Del Vecchio are they. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so they have this conversation that we cut to that night. So I guess the lynch mob, after Tillery leaves, the lynch mob sometimes will come and they'll just start a little fire and yell taunts down to the Mormons. They have a roast song. Yes, yeah. they do. They have a, they has a whole little song. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. oh. I wrote in my notes, uh, excuse me, that's my wife's job, sir. Stay in your lane. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. So they'd sing about how much they love killing Mormons. And Lyman is downstairs desperately prompting a flashback again, being sick, muttering. 
Right. Yeah, still no dice. Still no dice. And this is where we introduce, and this is going to become a huge part of the movie, right? This is where we introduce the fact that Sidney Rigdon wants to be his, wants them to fire their lawyer and let him act as their legal defense. Right. And this is building towards what Eli was talking about earlier, but they have to make it a huge conflict because it's really hard to read this as anything other than Sydney abandoning everyone else, you know, to, to get his right. So they're trying to like soften that blow. Right. And historically speaking, like Sidney Rigdon was there for less of the treason. Yes. Not none of the treason, but he was there for less of the treason. So what happened in real reality, podcast listener, is Sidney Rigdon was like, I wasn't there. Sob story, sob story. And the judge was like, OK, cool, you can go. But this movie is setting it up like Rigdon's like, damn it, I know I could do better than that slack jaw Jew lawyer you hired. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Right, the, like the powers of his oratory, not the fact that he literally wasn't there when several of the crimes were committed. That's what's going to get him out. Yeah, but in, he yeah. says that eloquently. Oh, yeah, so exactly. He, right. He right. won the the Mormon law thing. I also have to point this out, and we've seen this in a lot of the hagiography of Joseph Smith, right? Which is that whenever there are scenes like this in the movies, they make no sense because Joseph Smith is the prophet of God in Mormonism, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't argue with the prophet of God, right? There's never a scene where Peter and Jesus are going like, you don't want Mexican? We had Thai two nights in a row. It doesn't make sense because one of you is the prophet of God. Right. So what's important to understand is that the, the reason these scenes are so false and weird and Joseph speaks so little is because it's an entire rewrite of history. At this point in history, they were literally making no triple stamp, a double stamp rules about prophecy because they kept being like, um, an angel hath spoken and says, Joseph is a big poo poo face yep. and <laughs> no. don't listen to him. No, a different angel, better art angel said to me. Yeah. Yeah, and they're trying to rewrite it so hard with Joe Smith doing his little speech here too. They're mm -hmm. all arguing about lawyering or whatever. And he's like, everybody be quiet. I, Joseph Smith, am calm talking guy. We're all mm -hmm. innocent. That is canon. And they're like, canon, that is canon. He's very canon. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're all innocent, oh, 100%. And he's like, the truth will protect us. If we go without fear, we will win the trial because of God or something. So yeah. stupid. Yeah, he's like, hey, look, it sucks for us to all be in jail, but think about how many movies later Mormons will be able to inflict on Heath, Eli, and Noah over this yeah, shit. Yeah, come right? on, guys. Think about it. Also, but, they won't win the trial. Spoiler. Like that. Nope. D the prophet of God says that here and they forgot about it. He got it wrong. Well, it's, no. So I think what they're doing, because they do this several times, is that they're setting up that like, but they would have though. But they totally would, would have if, if there was a, was a trial. trial. They were trying to escape. Yes, but not because they were guilty. Yeah. So then we we cut to like Porter sneaking up the next day with a with a bucket. He's sneaking up to the jail so he can pass some fresh water through the window. And and a couple of hand drills. Hand drills. These comically yeah. large drills. He goes like, "Hey, y'all can dr you can drill your way out of jail. You ever seen uh, Shawshank Redemption? Well, it's kind of like that." Only stupider. <laughs> <laughs> Only significantly less practical. I could not have brought you a worse tool for getting out of jail than a hand drill. He might as well hand them a giant beer bottle opener and be like, you know, just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and based on what's happened so far, they just keep fucking everything up. So I was like, OK, can't wait to see how they fuck it up with these hand drills. Right. Trying to like use augers to get out of a basement <laughs> jail. We will see them do that, but yeah, we, we, we watch them well. do that for a lot. The handle of these hammers is all twisty. I don't know. <laughs> what do I, you gotta, we're hitting, right? You guys are hitting. Do cartwheels. That's what you gotta Spit do. Spit around, will you? Are you them. using your shoulders or your arms? Oh my God, that's really, a, I want to be very clear. Heath is not joking. Towards the end of the scene, he literally says, remember to use your shoulders, not just your arms. You got to lift with your back when lift you're with hammering your neck, the side backs, of yeah. the jail but with an auger. <laughs> how many jails has Porter drilled his way out of? Right? So, yeah. So, he's, he, but he explains to him how they can tunnel out with their little augers or whatever. And then we get this long scene of the, like, them trying to, to get a... I just got to get in. I, like, I got to get it to grip. Once it grips, it'll be pretty easy. We get that <laughs> for like seven minutes. And what makes this scene amazing is that the whole fucking time, Sidney Rigdon is just heckling them. 
right? He's just standing behind him going like, y'all are fucking suck. This is never going to work. It's stupid. You're never going to drill your way out of a prison. Y'all are a bunch <laughs> of fucking idiots. You guys are fucking <laughs> stupid. Okay, I, there's one thing I have to talk about in this scene, and I know it's just a tiny moment, but it's so fucking funny to me. They do the monologue with the uh, killing angel of Mormonism guy. He gives him the drills. And then I think they must have forgotten a line or something. He does that Midwestern. Well, <laughs> he does <laughs> that thing when you want people to leave. Yep. He, he does. does that and then leaves. <laughs> and then he leaves. He's like, yeah, well, I ran out of stuff to say. That's my list. I'm going to go. Well, those are my lines. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have anything else that you wanted to say. All right. Well, then bye. Yeah. So they start drilling out. Sydney's complaining and there's this ace like it'll never work. It'll never work. It's silly. And and one of them goes and I just have it as like Mormon six. I don't, I don't know who the fuck is who in, in this. But he goes, well, you know what else is silly and would never work? Turning water into wine or making the lame walk. And I'm like, well, yeah, no, those also didn't happen. It's a brave <laughs> time for you to say it, man. Yeah. I mean, it would be silly to make wine if you're Mormon using that magic. It would. Like, no, actually, yeah, it would be a pretty a dumb use angle. of your spell slots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and then I love to, this is a fucking amazing thing that the Mormons didn't mean to put in their movie, that, but they did. Is like at, behind him, everybody is working hard trying to drill this wall and just Joseph Smith is just sitting there contemplating and doing none of the work, which perfectly, if you know anything at all about Joseph Smith's actual history, Perfectly summarizes Joseph. It's so he's the perfectly Steve him. Jobs of Mormonism, 100%. isn't he? Yeah, uh -huh. he's cool in his feet in the shit bucket. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so yeah, but and then so Sydney, he doesn't feel like his complaining is quite ramped up enough. So then he yells, "Not even Jesus has suffered as much as I have." And the record needle screeches and everybody just looks so The over. auger screeches to a stop and they're like, dude, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. They pause like Noah and Heath after I go too far with a joke and I know there's going to be an edit. I'm like, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, we'll, so we'll pause. Okay, right, right. we'll pause for the cut. They might as well go, Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but Sydney breaks down and cries and everything. And, and then... We cut to like late that night and he's a muttering more. Yeah, a lot of Sydney mumbles in this movie, which is weird because they also did Lyman mumbling earlier. Mm -hmm. I wanted them to be in a mumble of No, I'm ill and trying to figure my <laughs> right, way yeah. out. No, I'm Ill. Well, and, and again, he's muttering flashback prompts, right? Lyman turns to Joseph Smith. He's like, I don't know what to do. Joseph, Sydney keeps muttering flashback intros and we don't have budget for that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he might mumble something useful to us? You know, like like in a movie? And they're like, nah, nah, I'm gonna hit it. Right, he probably sucks. Not. Probably not. All right. So then D they plan to kill Sydney here, right? They don't say it, but they they're both like hundred so percent. It'd be, I don't know, if he was not here, just probably better. Right? Yes. Yeah. Right, right. No, if if either of them woke up and found out the other one had slit Sydney's throat in the night and thought that they were agreed on it, neither of them would be able to say they didn't see that coming. Exactly, right? yeah. So okay. So now nothing having happened in February, we cut to March of 1839. <laughs> the title card might as well read, Did anything happen in March at least? Question mark. I, I wrote my notes. I was like, I bet nothing <laughs> happens in this month either. I was right. I was right. I Googled when Joseph Smith died, so I knew how close I was to the movie being over. Well, and uh, it was no help to me. <laughs> no, right. the wrong jail escape. <laughs> right, right. No, this is where, where I realized how hard this was to Google. I'm like, when did he escape from jail? In Missouri. In 18th. God damn it. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. But it's March of 1839 now. And Tillery's arriving with his bucket. He's bringing him moldy bread to eat now. Right. That's been an ongoing thing. He's bringing him gross food. <laughs> He mm -hmm. opens up the hatch and they're like, stop screwing into the wood with the auger that we have. What? <laughs> hmm? Hey, buddy. You doing? Yeah. And so while he's upstairs getting the moldy bread ready, a couple of the, the lynch, Neil and his buddy, his, his sidekick, have shown up to heckle him from the, from the window again. Well, because it's a third in the cycle of three scenes, you see, Noah. It is the yep. uh, try to escape from jail scene, the it sure does suck to be in jail scene, and now it's the third in the cycle, which is the hecklers come yeah, back. Yeah, right. The lynch mob shows back up, right. 
Okay, the, the heckling was pretty funny, though, because they were like, hey, Joseph Smith, it's me, your guardian angel, Moroni. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. And if you're Joseph Smith, you made up that ghost. You kind of have to play along and be like, At hey, least for a second. Oh, is that Everybody really? no, shut up. It might be Moroni, my guardian he angel. He doesn't have, he has a different accent. It's the No, one. it's not. It's him. It's the mob guy. <laughs> Yeah, but he's like, you killed my brother. And this is where they start to do the apologetic on that, right? He's like, yeah, but your brother sucked, though. He was a bad person that deserved it, right? And so Neil tries to, like, he's he's sharpened a long stick and he's going to try to, like, stab in there with it, right? Like he's going to spear one of them. <laughs> what was the win in his head when he thought of shove stick through tiny... <laughs> jail window. I guess that maybe it was going to go through his eye into his brain. You remember, yeah, you remember the phantom, the microscope where you're like, look at the microscope. Uh, the, the, uh, guys, don't you fucking leave me stranded on the phantom. I have no reference. idea what you're talking about. <laughs> of the opera? Guys, guys, this is an emergency. It's an emergency. The phantom movie. The movie, the phantom. Never the saw guy it. has, the villain has a microscope that he makes people look in and it pokes out their eyes. You're talking so, okay. about the musical phantom of the opera. No! <laughs> I don't remember no! that part. So you keep this in the podcast. I never tell you to keep. The, you keep it in. I need the people to rise up as one and tell me I didn't imagine the Phantom. I mean, I, I, whatever happened in the Phantom, I don't know. So yeah. wait, so, Phantom Tollbooth? No, there's a Phantom. <laughs> there's a movie of the purple. Yeah, we were the purple. The Phantom. He from was the old, purple. Old comic strips. And the bad guy had a microscope. Yeah, okay. Phantoms? I believe you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why do you know so many Phantom references? <laughs> no, this one. Phantom Menace? Um, so, it, I had one too. Keith is not going to speak for the rest of the podcast because he's just going to be thinking of Phantom references. <laughs> of the opera. No, I did that one. Ah. So, but he, he goes to stab him with his little stick. They grab his arm and he's like, well, fuck. Now they got my arm. And so they have this minute moment where they're going to try to pull him through the bars like a like a toothpaste kind of situation, squirting type of thing or whatever. But he gets away. They get his jacket. That'll never matter. They won't like use the jacket for anything. They do like a, they do like a, ha ha, got your jacket, huh? Scuffing it yeah, now. I'm scuffing it. it. Oh, I'm wiping my ass with it. <laughs> oh, feels so good on my butthole open right on it. <laughs> it's a suede. I like the nap on this. But they hear him yelling, and so so Tillery comes running out, right? He's going to wrestle Neil and get him away from his prisoners. So then, so Tillery gets his fucking ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> right. And the guy playing Neil, so clearly doing his stupid MMA 101 rear naked yep. choke that he recently learned from his piece of shit class. <laughs> yeah. So stupid. Yeah, so but they, they, they get the best of Tillery and they're about to kill him. He says, don't kill me now. They only have like a week left until they're hearing. And he's and, and apparently that's Neil's like, oh, well, in that case, it would be silly to. All right, well, I wouldn't want to interrupt jurisprudence. Well, I don't understand why that was so convincing to him, but it was. He might as well be like, guys, this isn't how the movie ends. And they're like, oh, OK. Sorry. Oh, right. No, you're right. We're stuck with the history and nothing actually we, happened. We probably shouldn't have won the fight then, huh? Yeah, you should have won. So <laughs> <laughs> he starts joking himself, flipping it around. <laughs> So, uh, but back inside the jail, Mormon number three is still hard at work. Andy Dufraining his way out with the drill. And this is, he he pushes so hard that he actually breaks the handle on it. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it's completely the improper tool for drilling your way out of a fucking prison? I guess. But yeah. Because it's a wine bottle opener? Because <laughs> jails don't have a cork he can put Right. No, yeah, they had a cork, though. But yeah, but so, but, but no, but he's cut through. He's broken through the wall. And then they're like, fuck, we're in a basement. That's just the ground now. Okay. <laughs> exactly. I, I was laughing so hard at yeah. this moment where they're like, we hit some rock. We're out. No. No. Fuck it's, it's, no. Did you guys know we're underground? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. And then they just they just they have a a little bowl of rocks. Like they cut from that to them all dismayed, just looking at like eight rocks in a bowl. Yes. <laughs> and being like that. That was nothing. I was gonna take a hundred and thirty five years. Have like we tried slowly gonna... walking out? And he doesn't see us. <laughs> Do we tried cheesing it. I know I've asked this before. I know I've asked this before. Can any of us eat dirt? <laughs> like nom 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 like worm? <laughs> no, still no? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for trying, Hiram. That's what I'm talking about. 
problem solver. Yeah. Give me a shit bucket. <laughs> but they give up. <laughs> they give up after you know getting a one bowl full of rocks for the night. And there's also this moment where they're like, they're all sitting there afterwards and they're looking at Sydney and he's muttering crazily or whatever. And they're like, hey, do you think Sydney's going to actually be able to talk the judge into letting us out? And they're like, why would we think that? It would be insane for us to think of that given what the audience knows of Sydney Rigdon at this moment. Right. But they, they established that he is actually a great preacher and he talked a lot of people into being Mormon. So he's pretty darn convincing. Okay. And again, I just have to point this out so that everyone understands what's going on, right? So again, I talked about this earlier. Sidney Rigdon was like, I wasn't there for all the treason, which to be fair, he wasn't there for all of it. So he's just like, let me go. Fuck those guys, right? So what they're rewriting the story as is that Sidney is such a passionate and eloquent speaker that he's going to fucking diatribe his way out of having done crimes. Yes. And uh, spoiler alert. He just might. He, yeah. Well, no. yeah. <laughs> He's just going to be like, I wasn't there for the treason per se, no low content And they're like, <laughs> gavel. <laughs> Eloquent. So, well, maybe that'll happen or maybe it won't. We don't know what's going to happen <laughs> at this hearing. God damn it. Let me have some kind of suspense. We're going to pretend Will that's... Will God be right or not? I question no. marked. I question marked. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> that did, you know, let me get, I'm going to give Act 3 the hard sell anyway. Gavel? Okay. Maybe I give Act 3 the hard sell. Will <laughs> their next escape plan involve painting a large tunnel on the side of a cliff? Will that painted <laughs> tunnel somehow issue forth a real train? Will Tillery meep mockingly at them before speeding away? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the encomiastic conclusion of. Yeah, I just I just learned that one, so I had to find some use for it. Out of Liberty. This message is sponsored by Greenlight. And if Max says, I want a Ferrari, you say... What color? Oh, come on, man. Hey, guys. What you doing? Hey, Heath. Eli and I got to talk about financial planning for us and his son, and it is not going well. Okay, but what if he needs a Ferrari, no illusions? Listen, guys, I know teaching your kids about money can be tough, but you can make it a whole lot easier with Greenlight. Green light means go. Exactly. Nope. Yeah. No. Uh, green light is a debit card and money app for families where parents can keep an eye on kids spending and money habits while kids learn how to save, invest and spend wisely. Wow. That sounds great. Like training wheels for financial decisions. Exactly. Then there's green lights infinity plan, which includes all the financial literacy education that makes green light a valuable resource for millions of parents and kids. Plus built in safety to give you peace of mind with green light infinity. Teens can check in without needing to actually check in thanks to family location sharing. They can also call for help when they need it with SOS alerts that connect them to family members, 911 or both. There's even a feature that detects car crashes and will connect young drivers to 911 dispatch and alert emergency contacts if needed. No matter which features make the most sense for your household, Greenlight is the easy, convenient way for parents to raise financially smart kids and for families to navigate life together. All right, Heath, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free when you go to greenlight.com slash awful. That's greenlight.com slash awful to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash awful. Hey, uh, given my finances, any chance they have Greenlight for adults too? You, you try to buy a, a stock on the bounce again? Okay, so the summer is the perfect time to buy a Zoom though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's take a look here. Seems like you guys were trying to drill your way out of prison. Uh, no, we would never do that. Okay, so how did all the holes get in the wall of the prison then? That was uh, mice. M mice, probably. Mice, right. Uh, look, guys, you are terrible at escaping, like genuinely awful. But you keep trying. I got to do this. I got to put you in irons. Now, now, Sam, there's no need for that. Unnecessary. There is, though. There's a need. You keep trying to break out of jail, and this makes it harder to do that again. Sam, look, I won't lie to you. It's an unjust state that locked us in this prison. <laughs> you know it, and I know yeah. it. We, we, we may have yeah. tried to escape in the past, but I am a good man of honor, <clears throat> and I swear to you that if you <clears throat> treat us with the dignity and respect that we deserve, Almost got it. we will never try to leave this prison unless <clears throat> the law allows it again. 
Okay, you hear that. Your brother's literally trying to squeeze through a drill hole in the wall right behind you right now. Damn it, Hiram. Almost got it. No, you don't, man. No, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the dormancy or whatever you want to call this. On the day of the hearing, the lynch mob is setting up at the courthouse for a good old pre-trial hanging, right? We haven't mentioned this to this point, but I wrote in my notes at this point, this movie has more establishing shots of wheat than any movie outside of an ADM training video. Oh my God, there's so much wheat. There's just, it's so, they're like, and they really have to lean into their establishing shots because again, nothing happens in the fucking movie, right? Yeah. And one extra's entire job was to do the old timey like spit tobacco thing and he, yeah. he fucks it up so bad it's all over his over face. and over again he's just constantly in the background dribbling shit down his face it's amazing give me another take chris i sw- this time i'm gonna, I'm gonna ah, spit fuck. good next time yeah <laughs> Jews, real tobacco bud i did no. i'm so sick <laughs> I, and I mean cancer. Like it also I'm yeah. nauseous too, but I have <laughs> jaw cancer now right. instantly. <laughs> and we should also probably mention my assumption is that this was actually filmed in the jail that the, like the Mormons preserved this jail or something like that. I could be wrong. It could be a replica, but I think it was the actual jail. The ceiling is super low, right? Because buildings didn't have as high as ceilings in the 1800s. People weren't generally as tall in the 1800s. And it doesn't matter for any of the actors except for this lawyer who's way too tall to stand up in this thing. So his head's just (laughs) constantly bent with his ear to the ceiling. (laughs) So I guess Heath probably doesn't find that funny at all, but I found it very fucking funny. Wow. Do we need to, guys, do we need to pause, bring in the HR department? (laughs) It's like Ryan Air in there. Not fun. Right. (laughs) So, yeah, but they're all like sedating around in the, in the jail going like, well, you know, there's a big mob waiting to murder you at the courthouse. I don't think we can go there. Right. But then the court's like, oh, we actually have other. There are other buildings other than the courthouse. We could just go somewhere else. And so they just they they, they decide to have court at a school <laughs> just go somewhere else. Yeah, that was the yeah. big that's the big thing that we were building towards in that scene. Can we have court outside? Yeah. We have court outside <laughs> nice today. <laughs> Yeah, but the court's like, fuck you, lynch mob. We're going to be over at the schoolhouse. So they they go to the schoolhouse for the hearing. And uh, apparently Sydney is so sick now that they have to carry him around on a little blankie. Okay. Okay. I can't. I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. Yes. Interesting. That is what's happening in the movie. But here's the thing, though. Even if you're so sick that people have to carry you around on a little blankie, they can still prop you up in a chair. Yeah. They <laughs> sure fucking can. But they just lay him on the fucking I don't think that's true. Floor. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Delivers. When you're sick, you become made of semi-liquid. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Podcast listener, he will deliver the first nine-tenths of this scene from a cot, including his, like, let the my people go monologue. Yes. Yes, right. Because every... So, so they bring him in, they lay him down on the floor. The the lynch mob hears that they're down at the schoolhouse. So they all come in and they're like, all right, well, we can't lynch you, but we can still like sit in the peanut gallery and yell rude comments at you Guys, during the court proceedings. When did they stop letting you heckle court? Because right. I want to take my time machine back to before then. That is what make I want to do. Make America great again, damn it. Yeah. So, but but the lynch mob all stands there heckling the lawyer and the judge is like, well, we can't have a hearing under circumstances like this. Obviously, there's no way the Mormons could get a fair hearing anywhere in Missouri. But Sidney Rignan, from laying on the ground, does his <laughs> like, I shall be heard oh, moment. so good. No. It's like a stand-up comedian having like a nervous breakdown on stage and just turning away and laying down. I was delivering the whole bit from there. But he does it in court here. Yes. And it sort of works. He's like, I will not allow a timeout on our hearing. And the judge is like, yeah, okay, that's a pretty solid point. Sounds like he's going somewhere. Let him finish. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then heckler guy, Neil from the mob is like, this guy can't even stand up. It doesn't count. Talking doesn't count. Let's stand up. And then Sydney gets stood up. Stands up. Yeah. And then they just, well, they help him to his feet, but then he just stands there. So like, 
He could have been standing the whole time. <laughs> he yeah. could have been. And, and Heckler guy is shut down by this. He's like, fuck, didn't see that. Would have shut me down. With him <laughs> standing up right after I said it doesn't count. Would have shut me down. Stand you up. drag a man in on a cot. He does half his monologue from the floor. And I'm like, why don't you stand up? And he does. I spend the rest of the time just listening. I'm like, yeah, you got me, man. No, that's fair. That is fair. I am I am shook by that change. And what's amazing here, <laughs> again, they, they've set this up. They've now spent like a third of this movie setting up this great monologue for the from the you know brilliant orator that is Sidney Rigdon, right? And he gives this whole big, you know, we have been trying for a thousand miles to find somewhere that wouldn't turn us away in every community. We've read this persecution and you say we stole the animals, we stole livestock, but in truth, they just kind of wandered into our area. So it's we the ate them. And they, but yeah, right. He just like throws that in the middle and you're like, well, that still doesn't care. You had, you knew it wasn't your cow though. You <laughs> can't just eat a thing because it's in your. <laughs> Is it touching base? Is that why you're allowed to kill? Also, if you know anything about the history of this period of time, the rewrites. So these Jews were like, I bet your ovens don't get that hot. I'll show oh you a thing or two. Is that the level oh, no. of historical rewriting that is happening right now? <laughs> they bought tickets for those trains. <laughs> but he he gives this long fucking speech about how persecuted the Mormons are. And then he throws it at the end. And oh, by the way, I wasn't even there when the when the treason that I'm being charged with. I was like elsewhere in a different state and I can prove that. And the judge is like, oh, well, why did you say all the other stuff? Then that's irrelevant. Yeah. No. <laughs> so. It was cool when you did a bunch of Latin. So like you're good to go. But like, yeah, the, the rest of that was irrelevant for sure. OK, done. Yeah. So they, they, but the judge says, all right, well, you're free to go. And he's like, I can't because they'll kill me, the lynch mob guys. And they're like, that's not, not our problem anymore, though, actually, as it turns out. But ultimately, Tillery ag agrees to escort him back to the jail and his family can pick him up from there. Right. So, so that night we're back at the jail. We're having some tea. Tillery has to tell Sidney how impressed he was by his oratory as well. <laughs> yeah. Right. But then he flips around. He's like, yes. yeah, so good Latin or whatever. But, you know, I hate to be that guy. Maybe do a speech that helps your friends too next time because that's well, yeah, you're again, out and they're in the hole. That's the problem of this rewrite, right? Is that you also have to then write a part of, well, if he was able to do a, a diatribe that was so good that they would just right. get out Why of didn't he get Heath and Eli out as well? Exactly. Right, exactly. <laughs> Why doesn't he also let them be on the podcast? So it's, yeah. Uh, and so he's got to talk about how much he regrets it and he never thought it would be just him and mm -hmm. these are his best friends and he's not sure. And, right, yeah. The, yeah. Sidney Rigdon's great-great-grandson must have produced this film or something. It smacks of, maybe this is too niche a reference, but sometimes you're reading a fan fiction. Or, sorry, sometimes I'm reading a fan fiction. <laughs> a younger me is reading a fan fiction, an erotic fan fiction, if you will. And all of a sudden, the characters in Hunger Games are behaving in a way they never would. So the writer of the fan fiction feels a need for the characters in the fan fiction to be like, I thought that PETA and so-and-so didn't get along. Why would they be having a game? Yeah, right. Right <laughs> That's what this movie is. It's the Mormon movie. I'm clicking through the chapters until I see the word cock, but I'm still, yep. this, you're explaining it to me anyway. Yeah. Hey, there's a couple of nerd perverts in our audience who are like, God, he was amazing with the AC language. These I know the rest of you. Nailing. The rest of you are lost and also worried for me, but I'm telling you, those nerd perverts, yep. they get it. Yeah. The, we each we each appeal to our own 17% of the nerd audience. Nerd perverts. So, but the speech gets Tillery so pissed that he slaps the T out of Sydney's hand at one point and like angrily tells us his backstory. Yeah. So I guess he was in a regiment in the War of 1812 that had to retreat and let the White House get burned down. Mm -hmm. And so he's been known as a coward around town ever since because his his guys retreated. Right. He retreated from Canada. That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's fair. Fair. But yeah, he's like, this is just like my backstory. And I'm like, I don't see how these things are related in any way. He's like, well, no, I but we had to work it in somehow. We've set it up earlier. I'm like, you didn't have to set it up. They're like, well, no, I guess we guess we didn't. But then but Sydney's wife shows up to to pick him up. And Joseph Smith has been waiting upstairs with him this whole time, I guess so he'd have company. 
But now Joseph has to lower himself back down on this rope to to get into the basement. And I only mention that because like this actor takes so fucking long to lower himself down. It's, it's 15 minutes. It's incredible. It's incredible. And they're doing a very dramatic dialogue while he's doing yeah. it. Yeah. So it's just <clears throat> baby, it's just <throat> fat baby Heath in gym class trying to climb the rope while also doing a historical <laughs> drama. <laughs> just I tell you, Joseph, <laughs> I still never know the I'm not gonna ring that bell. I'm not even gonna get close to the bell. <laughs> so but yeah. But then, so he gets down. My average motion is down this whole time. <laughs> I started at the bottom. How, I'm lower somehow. How did I get lower? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but so, but he gets locked back downstairs. Sydney goes to leave and he turns to Tillery and he's like, hey man, do you think that somebody's like going to be hiding in the bushes to kill me? And he's like, ah, probably bye. And then closes the door on him. I love that so bye. much. <laughs> you probably shouldn't have fucked your buddies, huh? Bye. So, okay. So then the next morning, the sheriff shows up and he wants to come down and check out the basement. Make sure nobody's been drilling any holes in it. Right. So he comes out. Everybody stands in front of the drilled hole like me and my brother hiding a hole we put in the drywall. So fucking <laughs> Nothing funny. over here. This is supposed to be Joseph Smith, prophet of the angel Moroni. <laughs> So Why would you put this in your movie? Yeah, he tries to swallow an auger and he's just yes. like, oh. <laughs> nope. It didn't work at all. So yeah, but the sheriff finds the hole and he's like, yeah, we actually know about it because you sent that hat guy away with a handle to fix it or whatever and, and he got caught. Right. So they go to put him in irons again mm -hmm. and again, Joseph Smith is like, there's no need to knock us <laughs> He's like, there's a hole in your jail cell, you fucking you that you just drilled. You did that. It could have been anybody actually that drilled that hole in the jail cell. Say, I don't you think. did it. Yeah. <laughs> so they they have what is supposed to be a very dramatic shoving match. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Because Mormon number five ain't wearing no damn chains. Damn it. So they end up all in a fight in a tiny little closet like D and D minus because Eli doesn't know how like three dimensional. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All works. they're missing is a werewolf. Yep. Yeah. So, but they, but eventually they stop fighting because nothing in this movie can have a consequence. Otherwise, they'd have to reconcile it with the historical record. So they all get put in irons. And then we get someone we've never met who I guess is like the governor's man or something. And he's here to chat with Tillery about the, the change of venue that the Mormons got now. Okay. So this is fucking amazing, right? Because again, the ahistorical thing, the rewrite of this is not bribed the guards with whiskey. It's he has been studying a very specific subset of laws that means you're allowed to abandon your duty and let Joseph Smith get away. Mm -hmm. But what's been missing so far is someone coming and saying he's innocent. And that's what this fictional character, yes. apropos of nothing is there to do. He is literally there to be like, by the way, I don't know if there's any reason for me to tell you this, but they are totally innocent. There's and no everybody way, knows it. And it's just public opinion that had them locked up in the first place. And public opinion acts out, quote, like an unfettered child, end quote. D dude, do you fucking fetter your kids? What the fuck is wrong with you, man? <laughs> what what are you doing to your children? <laughs> also, the idea that they're innocent after, like, 20 times in the movie already trying to beat up Sam and escape jail is so, and do a murder that we keep getting told about also. Yep. They did that as well. Yeah. They kept, <laughs> honestly, when they keep failing, I just, I couldn't stop laughing. I was like, all right, if they just do the entire rest of the movie with them failing and failing and failing <laughs> and they never get out of jail, I would love this movie. Yeah. Never a better way to finish yeah, it. Yeah, no doubt. If this well, really then, did Then you will love him. history. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some great news. Yeah. So, okay. So, but Tillery goes inside because the, what the guy's basically told him is he's like, hey, look, the, the, the governor really wishes this whole problem would just go away. You know, if, if, if only we didn't have to find them innocent or guilty, if someone could find some solution to that. Right. So he goes inside to think on his position. And downstairs, Joseph is cry praying. Oh, yeah, this is this actor's fucking Oscar bid right here, baby. Isn't it, though? Now, I'll tell you what, what, what you learn after 465 
Christian movies is cry praying means we're almost there, guys. We're almost there, <laughs> right? But at first, they all they have to flash back to all the stunt work in the movie. So now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I could be misinterpreting this, but I feel like what's happening right now is that both Tillery and Joseph Smith are remembering the movie. Yep. Yeah. And we're getting like a a mashup of their like a both of their flashbacks. Yeah, they're both. Yeah one swoosh in at least at this point like I thought they were going to bonk heads in like the same <laughs> swoosh area for a second they're just cross cutting with these two these two flashback sequences and then they do like flashbacks two flashbacks they get very confused here this is what at one point about. they flash back to the immediately previous scene right he flashes back to that conversation he was just having with the dude I'm like we we remember that guys but honestly, because the flashbacks are constantly, oh, like, oh, remember when this guy punched this guy? Oh, what about the time that this guy got thrown down? It's like the movie is saying, see, something did too happen in this movie. A lot of stuff happened, actually. A lot of people could have got hurt. Well, you spent three days on this fight choreography, Noah, Heath, and Eli. You yeah. guys are wrong. God damn it. But ultimately, though, Tillery decides that they're right, and he should forgive them for trying to auger their way out of fucking prison eight minutes ago. So he goes downstairs and he takes off their handcuffs because he realizes that Joseph Smith is a trustworthy guy after all. Yeah. And then I guess Joseph Mormonisms at him a bit. He gives him this pep talk. And which, can I say, peak Joseph Smith, he's like, look, they might kill you. They might torture you. They might say in all of the history books that are even a little reputable that you let me go in exchange for whiskey that my brother brought with him. But you get to go to heaven. And dying for me builds character. <laughs> <laughs> Doodly do. Doodly do. Bonked my head. What was oh, that? Oh, damn it. Damn it. Doodly do. So now we cut to April of 1839, which we had all Googled by this time, is the month when anything finally happens in this story, right? So, lawyer, so Tillery showing up at the prison uh, for another morning of hard work. The lawyer's there this time, right? They're about to go off to do their their trial. So they, he opens the hatch. The poop bucket guy's holding the poop bucket up again. So they got him. Classic bit. They, they even have a bit where the guy goes, you're going to miss that, aren't you? And he's like, I won't miss anything about the prison, which means that they do this every day or at least regularly, which means like, Look, if you're the one standing there for any amount of time holding a big bucket of your own feces, you did not get me. Mm, right? I'm disagree, not the no one illusions. who get... And also, by the way, the second time you hey, did that to me, I just... I would just knock it out of your fucking hand. That's right. true. You're you are going to you are going to kick the bucket me. of shit yes, onto exactly. someone's head. I mean, come the on. The second time, <laughs> but the first time, I definitely got. Oh, the you. first time it you doesn't got. Matter. Sure, no, that's that's. I fair. don't care if I had to perch above your door like Spider Man for forty days and forty nights. I got you. <laughs> I got you good. You'll see it, Matreon, next year. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So but they're like, oh, you know, our trial. We finally made it. I was worried for a while that we wouldn't survive because like you couldn't possibly be the prophet of God if you died in prison. I mean, that would be ridiculous to think that people could get it. But he actually says that he actually like had they have their little I guess it's a kind of a wink and an Easter egg for Mormons or whatever. But yeah, he might as well turn to camera and be like, call forward. Yep. It's yeah, good. we didn't. Right. We record the episodes in a different order. <laughs> this is a get ahead. <laughs> So, yeah, so, but the lawyer's like, hey, don't worry. I've arranged for a militia escort to, to bring you to the prison so that none of these lynch mob guys can get you. And Joseph Smith in real life was like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Well, because I'm going to bribe this guy. Don't do that. But cause... in the movie, it has to be, I need no militia. God will protect me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. And atheist guy's like, here we go. Okay. <laughs> it's too bad you uh, used up that coupon, Joe. I feel like you're going to need that. Uh... Yeah. So, yeah, right. So, but but they decide to go without the militia. They're not going to wait for the militia. So they go to leave and the mob is already there. I want, so when that happened, when they made that decision to like, all right, I guess we're going along with Joseph Smith and using no protection, God alone. I was like, please get killed the moment you step outside. Right. Mm -hmm. And they do step outside and the mob is right there as if they heard me say yeah. that. I wouldn't yeah. be able to just shoot him in the face. Right. Oh, could have been <laughs> such a great ending. Yeah. So, but the dead brother guy shows up and he's like, we're not letting him leave. We're going to lynch him once and for all. 
And <laughs> Joseph Smith has this great line. He's like, hey, man, look, if I'm guilty of murder, we would refuse not to be punished by the law. <laughs> So he might as well chop down a fucking cherry tree. It's so yeah. goddamn stupid. I promise I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. And you can see that neither of my hands have crossed fingers. And and then he, the Neil has to say, you know, he has to like answer back. And he goes, you Mormons, you come here with your thoughts and ideas. Yes. I'm like, okay, it wasn't the thoughts and ideas that people were pissed. It was the raping of their children and whatnot. That was well, you know, that, of course, he has to reveal that this is what they were mad about all along. Yes, it was that right. they just can't handle Joseph Smith's girthy biblical truth. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, after that, Tillery has to have a shouty monologue about ethical philosophy. <laughs> so, so he has his bit. And it sort of works and he thought that was going to help, like, sway the angry mob by giving him another Lockean speech. It does not go well. No, nope. it does not. Go. No, because the, the dead brother guy's like, all right, you're a nerd. I'm just going to quick draw against you. Yeah, but they're doing it with old timey fucking hand muskets. Yeah. Uh -huh. I really wanted a quick draw where they're like having to push the powder into the barrel. Right, load right. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 and they neither of them fire because it works 2% of the time. Right. <laughs> Shit. All right. Well, Sorry, I'll we, I'll reload, reload. reload. I'm going to do another. Um, but yeah, but Tillery wins the quick draw. Just blowing the powder away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> switch guns, switch guns. <laughs> But yeah, but so but Tillery wins the quick draw, shoots the other guy, but don't worry, it's in the shoulder. He'll be fine. Yeah. Right? Like, How many people died in 1839 of an injury? Come oh, God. Relax. Like, just shoot. It's fine. Shot nothing. It's nothing. It's a flat. It's only a flesh wound. So, but he shoots Tillery and the mom's like, well, fuck, we know when we're beat. I guess we'll go, guys. Seems like the rest of the mob would still be a mob a little bit. They would still mob. Right? You'd think. You'd think they would still mob. Yep. Neil's like the mothership from Independence Wait, Day. Yes. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum is in that bullet. You think after they shoot their leader, they might like mob even harder. Yeah. Yeah. So then, okay. And then, so they leave. The mob leaves and then the, and then the Mormons leave to go ahead the several days journey to this other court. And we get a walking montage. There are eight fucking minutes left in this movie and there's a walking <laughs> montage in it. Yeah, and small talk. Yeah, yeah about the guy's talk. horse. Joe Smith's like, cool, uh, sweet, sweet horse do you have. And the guy's like, you don't have to do that. We're just walking. Come on, man. God, they, but okay, but that does set up one of the funniest, most pathetic yeah, things in their yes, breakfast yeah, club clothes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, right. So he says, he, he tells them all about the horse. He's like, what's the horse's name? He says, Medley. And, and Joseph Smith says, Medley. What a great name. And we know that's like some kind of Mormon Easter egg that Medley is his sidekick in the second movie or something. We don't know, right? But 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 like you it's very obvious that they're I tried. I Googled Mormon Medley and they were like, You want some tabernacle? And I was like, I don't want some tabernacle choir. And they were like, You sure? We got you know what? I do want some tabernacle. There well, we actually, <laughs> while we're while we're right here. So okay. So they but they stop in this field somewhere and Tillery turns to him and he says, You know, if you guys go to trial, you will definitely definitely be found innocent which would be bad maybe even <laughs> extra innocent you might even be found innocent of crimes that don't exist the entire universe would collapse in and itself because you guys would be so goddamn innocent and that we can't have that You'd be demoralizing all the fake christians I think right exactly it would be so obvious that you guys had the right religion that it would fuck up all of christianity here are a list of reasons why we know that you're innocent. <laughs> it goes on for so fucking long. But he's like, but uh, so what the only thing we can do is allow you to escape so that the so that the courts don't have to find you innocent and piss off so many other Christians. Right. In fact, if you think about it, you escaping is the most innocent thing <laughs> of all. That's how I prevented me from beating up those guys outside of Denny's. That I was helping them by sneaking out. That yeah. was, <laughs> yeah. He does this thing that sometimes I do when I'm losing an argument with Heath where I just slow down my speech and get final in my tone. Yeah. And then he's like, you didn't say a thing just now. That's what he does in this monologue. I recently said to you, why do you say things? <laughs> you did. You did say that. Because like now so I have to grind it to a halt and be like, you said for a long, <laughs> slow time, nothing. The equivalent of nothing. Just you don't do that. that and That's we can true. talk like people. I, it's, I, it's my turn. 
Well, okay, but but the key <laughs> here, here no the key here though is that the Mormons don't want to escape, but they guess as a favor to the state of Missouri, they will in this instance, right? Just my worry. hands are tied. I mean, not literally anymore, but no, 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 my hands actually, would have been tied. Yeah. Uh, so they, but they escape. And then fucking Joey turns to the guy with the horse and he goes, hey, I will buy medley from you with an IOU. And the guy's like, uh, will you? Because you're like a famous con man who cheats everybody. And he's like, we'll see. Well, you'll, I'll, I'm good for it. Yeah, no, he goes, it, his actual <laughs> line is, is that the word of a prophet or a con man? And I'm just picturing the, they're the same picture meme, right? Like, right, yeah, exactly. Like, and, then, and then he pulls out the piece of paper from his like IOU pad that he has with him all, all over the place and hands it to the guy. He's like, oh, it's a, it's a really long, no, I figured it would just say like, I owe you $150, Joseph Smith, but it's like, a really long front and back postcard that somebody did in small print. Dear guy. Well, though, there's probably a lot of notwithstanding if whether at the time of repayment is not properly, you know, there's <laughs> probably a bunch of that kind of stuff in there somewhere. Yeah. But so, but they, they leave two of them have horses. The other three don't. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Like, I guess Joseph Smith just gets home sooner than the other guys. <laughs> and then we get a scene of Tillery going back to the jail and, staring longingly at that shit bucket as if to say, well, now they're never going to hold that up to my face as I open the thing again. Okay, he stared too long at the shit bucket, right? Oh, like, that yeah. was like I was like, that's a sex thing. That's now. what that's I'm going to miss the most. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> he just runs his hand slowly along it. Yeah. It, walks out. And then we get the uh, their breakfast club clothes. And I almost went with best worst breakfast club clothes, right? Because first they tell us that Tillery eventually did get to be a justice of the peace. But that's what he was studying for the whole time. And then he died. Whatever. The church leaders left Liberty Jail after 155 days. And then the thing that they fucking close on is, and Joseph Smith did pay that guy for that horse. Four years I later. I think he's lying. I think the movie's lying. A hundred percent. And no vig. You just gave back $150. That's like, I don't know, five grand back then with no vig. Yeah. No vig. <laughs> good point. Yeah. But that's where they closed. They're like, he had to be a good guy because he paid for the horse. Right. From the guy who clearly like knew where he was and that he was wanted by the state of Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but that's where the movie ends. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need more Mormonism next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. In this modern take on the Jane Austen classic, oh Elizabeth, an earnest college student at Brigham Young University, oh no. is more focused on her studies than on scoping out prospective husbands. But when two wildly different suitors, smooth-talking womanizer Jack Wickham and straight-faced businessman Darcy, attempt to win her over, aided by her friends, Elizabeth must struggle to find love. And choose Mr. Right. We'll be watching Pride and Prejudice, a latter day comedy. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. So, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 466 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you're looking at yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Idiots, Citation Data, DD Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotney. People draft some Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Mitt Romney went on to start a private investment firm named after a literal Batman villain using right-wing death squad money from El Salvador. And then they hired binders full of women. That was a good thing. Joe Smith would go on to cry more. Mormonism laid down their guns and picked up the funeral potatoes. Eventually, they still have guns.
how funny is it that I'm just like, all right, we'll record in the train, train <laughs> immediately afterwards. All right. <clears throat> you could tell I was about to record by the siren that kicked up in my mm -hmm. background. Sorry, give glad me to see second. your neighbors back. That's nice. Good for yeah, her. Right? No, so, no, that the house was sold actually. Somebody uh somebody bought it to rent it now. So glad to hear the Supreme Court ruled about atheism. Yeah. All right, here we go. And we're back for the break. Sorry, sorry he, that was a really funny fucking joke, and I just yesed <laughs> it, and then I was like, "Yep," and then and then I got it, and then I'm like, "Okay, now it's too late to <laughs> to laugh without sounding stupid." I was sitting there going, "Like, wait, what did the Supreme Court do most recently?" <laughs> I, I, okay, all right, yeah, I get it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.